How are you doing, you wonderful nerds? Are you excited for the new season of The Flash? I know that I would be if I had finished last season. It's on Netflix, right? I still have time. Either way, I thought we could take a break from talking about comic books and politics like we've been doing these last few weeks to instead explain the hidden meaning behind The Flash and how the superhero is secretly an allegory for Cold War American ideals. Wait, what? Nah, you already knew what you were in for when you clicked on this video. That's right. Vibrating through walls, running circles around his enemies, and matching science with science, The Flash was some prime. American propaganda that would help quell the fears and anxieties that many Americans had over a different kind of flash. What are you supposed to do when you see the flash? As I'm sure you all know, the original Flash, Jay Garrick, premiered in 1940, but as the years passed, superhero comics fell out of style and the character was quietly tucked away. Then, in 1956, the Flash was rebooted with a new costume and a new alter ego, Barry Allen, and he was great! His grand debut would usher in the next big superhero boom. Soon after, comic book audiences witnessed other Golden Age heroes revamped at DC and welcomed floods of new super characters from Marvel. The comic book industry was revitalized in a Flash, or should I say, with a flash. Nope. No, that's dumb. And this is the era that we'll be focusing on in this video, Silver Age Flash. But why was the Scarlet Speedster so popular? Why did the Flash make such a splash? Well, we probably have the Cold War to thank for that, as author Frederick A. Wright explained in his essay from the appropriately named comic books and the Cold War, highly recommend it, link in the doobly-doo. So really quickly, as I'm sure the Flash would appreciate, the Cold War was a complex multinational conflict that lasted over 40 years, the two principal opponents being the United States and the Soviet Union. It's called the Cold War because it never really escalated into direct physical war between the two. It was a conflict of espionage, military intimidation, technological innovation, and nuclear supremacy, with the two countries trying to one-up each other and advance their own power and ideals. And of course, political propaganda is a huge part of that, especially in comics. Frederick Stromberg's comic art propaganda highlights a ton of books that blatantly try to sway readers both against and for communism. But there were plenty of other stories that were a little bit more subtle about the idea of two superpowers fighting without direct physical confrontation. In fact, that sounds exactly like the specialty of a certain speedster I know. In his debut story, The Flash faces off against Turtle Man. That's right, the fastest man alive versus the world's slowest man. What a challenge. That's like if Spider-Man's first villain was like a fly who is arachnophobic. Barry learns that he can't stop Turtle Man by chasing after his getaway boat, as every step Flash takes only propels the raft forward. The hero realizes the only way to stop Turtle Man is to not run after it. Instead, Flash invents one of his most iconic and go-to attack maneuvers, running around things real fast. Barry here is exercising Cold War tactics of fighting without physical confrontation. In fact, the Flash didn't necessarily fight his early enemies as much as he contained them. Containment was America's policy for dealing with communism during the Cold War. It could exist in places where it already was, but the United States would try to stop communism from spreading elsewhere. But while the Flash was able to contain these criminals with ease, his speed force powers also made it near impossible for others to contain him. I mean, forget villains. Flash Flash couldn't be held back by doors, by buildings, by the sound barrier, by gravity, or by the time stream. I mean, the cover of his first appearance shows Flash bursting through a film strip, and then you turn the page to see that he can't even be contained by his own comic. The guy breaks through the panels in his own stories, and Captain Cold thinks ice is gonna stop him? Nothing can contain the Flash. His is the ultimate freedom. Flash is freedom, racing forward, unstoppable American progress. That's the comics talking, not me. But actually, let's go back to Captain Cold for a sec, because his first appearances are some of the most overt references to the Cold War. If his name wasn't a clear enough homage, there was his radiation-powered ice gun. After the world witnessed the horrific power of the atomic bomb, there was a lingering anxiety and ease with what science could accomplish. The United States and Soviet Union were competing in a nuclear arms race that would culminate in mutually assured destruction. But the American American government saw value in comics and cartoons as tools that could help ease anxieties about personal and national security and nuclear war. You know, this guy. There was a turtle by the name of Bert, and Bert the turtle was very alert. When danger threatened him, he never got hurt. He knew just what to do. He stopped and covered. He stopped and covered. He stopped and covered. He did what we all must learn to do. And you, and you, and you.
Now, putting aside the fact that that strategy would clearly work and was way ahead of its time, Bert the Turtle had a bit of an unexpected downside, as Richard L. Graham wrote in his book, Government Issue. A lot of books today. Quote, the strategy behind Bert was to have a cartoon animal stand and soften the blow when a topic was too scary to deal with directly. But by purging all frightened elements and presenting a perverse cheeriness, Duck and Cover also delivered a subtle and scary message to children. Everything you take for granted, the safe world of your childhood, could all dissolve at any moment in the flash of atomic fire." End quote. You're on your own. So that's not good. Comic book superheroes like Superman and Captain Marvel would have their chance to come to grips with the nuclear age, but Flash was a bit more subtle. Captain Cold's ice gun was created through a radioactive scientific accident. It was science gone awry and placed in the hands of evil. And yet, even with Captain Cold armed with his own nuclear weapon designed to stop the Flash's forward progress, and even as he threatened Iris West, aka the Western world, Flash always won the battle. He matched science with better science a clear metaphor for the arms and technology race. In some cases, of course, a literal race. Perhaps these fears and anxieties over one bright red and yellow flash were precisely the inspiration DC Comics needed to revamp their own bright red and yellow flash. But what do you think? How else do old Flash stories represent the Cold War? I, I think there's something to say about how almost all of his early villains were very specifically bank robbers. Uh, maybe it's like a fear of disrupting the economy, redistributing wealth or something like that. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and I'll respond to some of them in Monday's comment response video. As always, a huge thanks to our patrons, Christopher Lang, Keaton Lampert, Mike Harville, Elizabeth Monsell, and the rest of the wonderful nerds who help us keep this show going over at patreon.com slash nerdsync. I encourage you to watch more Nerd Sync. You can do so by clicking or tapping right up here to see our latest video or right down here for something YouTube's mysterious algorithm thinks you'll enjoy. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Scott, reminding you to read between the panels and grow smarter through comics. See ya.